Let's now go and start to create our price modifiers. In the last one, if you remember, we decided what we're going to do is we're going to have a modifier for each of these types. So here we have a promotion uh, for the Black Friday half price sale. And in order to modify the price, we're going to create a modifier called date range multiplier. So it'll be a single class with a single responsibility to modify the price based on this criteria which we see here. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. And then we'll create one for fixed price voucher which should be uh, fairly straightforward and then we'll create one for even items multiplier which could be quite interesting and get into some interesting code and so let's make a start in our uh, tests unit folder let's create a new test and we'll call it price modifiers test this will need to extend service test case and so let's create our first test and we shall call it Date range multiplier returns a correctly modified price. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the end again. And so what is the end? If we remember where we were on the previous uh, recording, the lowest price filter, we would said that we wanted to have a price modifier with a modify method uh, which returns the modified price. So we shall copy that and we'll go and paste that in here. In fact, we'll do it in the when part because that is the action that we're performing. And so then the assertion we want to make is that the modified price uh, matches a specified price. So this assert equals and we'll say 250 and then modified price. So now that we've established what our desired outcome is, we want to be able to call this method on this modifier and expect this result, we can now go and piece together all the dependencies which can help us uh, achieve that aim. So the first thing we're going to need if we work left to right is we're going to need a price modifier. And in fact what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give it the name of the modifier that we're going to go with. So this will be a date range modifier. And so date range modifier equals new date range modifier. Obviously that doesn't exist yet so uh, that's something which we're going to need to create. The price, we'll actually drop that in there, we'll say 100. So 100 multiplied by 5 because this, this is going to be a Black Friday half price sale. 100 multiplied by 5 should give us 500 and then if it's been um, multiplied by 0.5 then we should get an answer of 250. Okay, so what we're going to need now, we're going to need a promotion. So let's go to our other test and we'll borrow that one here so we can grab all of this and just drop that in there. And I'll just change the name to promotion. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This is uh, our promotion entity which is getting passed into the modify method. And as you can see, it's got all the details there for a date range multiplier. And then we need an inquiry. New lowest price inquiry. And on this, we're going to need a quantity, even though I've actually just dropped it in there anyway, we've hard coded it, but we'll go through the motions anyway. And inquiry will need the request date because uh, this is entirely dependent on uh, dependent on the rest date falling between these from and to dates here. So we need something in the middle of there. Let's go with 2022, 11, 27. That should fit the bill. And so if we go and run this now, I'm expecting to see an error to say that we don't have a date range multiplier. But let's not guess what's going to happen. Let's just do it and we might be surprised. It might come up with something else. So vendor bin PHP unit tests unit price modifiers test dot PHP. Okay, and so just as we thought, error class app tests unit date range modifier not found. So we need to 
go and create that date range modifier and we need to decide where it's going to live. So if we go to our lowest price filter, that is in a folder called filter. I think we can put another folder inside of there with modifiers. And I've said filter using uh, singular, so we'll say modifier using singular, not that it really matters. And I think we'll have an interface because each of our uh, modifiers are going to need to have this modify method and hopefully should have the same interface, the same arguments. So let's actually comment that back out and we'll go and create it with that signature. So inside of our modify folder, our modifier, we'll create an interface. We'll call this price modifier interface. And so just a single method modify, which will take an int price, int quantity. We said that the next argument will be a promotion, a promotion inquiry interface. So again, this is likely to change. We're likely to go with something a little bit more specific, maybe a price inquiry interface, but let's not think too far ahead. And we'll just say inquiry for now. And then that will be an integer. So I'll just drop that there. Okay, so it's taking a price as an integer, quantity as an integer, a promotion object and an inquiry object. And we're gonna return an integer, which will be the price or the newly modified price. So now in the same folder, I can create my date range multiplier. Date range multiplier implements price modifier interface. So I'll get the red squiggly line and in PHP Storm, I can hit Alt and Enter and it'll give me the option to add the method stub. So I'll hit Enter again and then hit Enter again. And so we have a empty modify method. So we now have a date range multiplier. I think we can go back and run our test and let it tell us what to do next. So first off, I'm just gonna make sure that I am actually pulling in that date range modifier. In fact, I'd called it date range modifier, but what it was meant to be called was date range multiplier. So date range multiplier. Okay, so let's go and run this test. And so our next error is a type error, app filter modifier, date range multiplier, modify, return value must be of type int non returned. So we're expecting uh, the result to be 250. So let's just go and hard code that in. And that should give us a green. Okay, so one test, one assertion even though we've just hard coded that in, but at least we know that now we are on the right track. How will we arrive at 250? Let's just um, put some comments in there. So it will be price multiplied by quantity, and then that will be multiplied by the promotion adjustment. So multiplied by like so. So I think we can just give that a go now. So price multiplied by quantity, and then multiply by promotion, get adjustment. So hopefully that should arrive at a value of 250 again. So let's go and run this once more. Okay, one test, one assertion, we are still getting 250. So far, so good. What do we need to consider now? So now we know how to calculate it, but we need to think about the criteria. So is, this is what we're going to return if everything goes well or if the date does fall in the particular range. However, what if the date does not fall in the particular range? What do we need to do then? Well, we simply miss out this bit. We don't uh, multiply it by the adjustment. We should return price times quantity. So let's just start figuring that out. And it's going to be if the date doesn't, return, uh, doesn't fall within the particular range, so we'll just say if false for the time being. And then what we're gonna do is return price multiplied by quantity. The easiest way for me to figure out logic like this a lot of the time is to actually figure out what is true. So if the date does fall in between those dates and that would look something like this. If the request date is greater 
or equal to from and the request date is less than two. And so in order to change that to a negative, I'll just negate it like so. Obviously this is not gonna work yet because we need to figure out what these values are going to be or how we're going to get these values. Let's work on that now. So request date equals, and we'll create a date. And what we're creating it from, it comes from promotion get request date. In fact, it comes from inquiry get request date. From, I'm gonna do a similar thing, date create. And this time it will come from promotion get criteria, and it will be from. And then two, I'll just copy that. And then it will be uh, promotion get criteria two. So when I get to stages like this, I like to just dump things out and make sure that I am seeing values and seeing the correct values uh, before I go any further. So DD request date, DD from, and also two. So let's actually go and run this. Okay, so the request date, I'm getting 27th of the 11th. From, I'm getting 25th of the 11th. And two, we're getting 28th of the 11th. So that's working fine. I can go and uh, remove that dump. And then I think we should now see a passing test. Let's go and run this. Okay, great stuff. One test, one assertion. So little sanity check. Let's go back to our test. And we'll actually change this date so it's outside of the range. And we should then see it fail. And then in which case it won't be multiplied by 0.5, we should get 500 here. So we should get a failing test telling us that 250 does not match 500. Let's go and run this. Okay, perfect. Failed asserting that 500 matches expected 250. So our next mission is to figure out uh, the similar logic or the similar thing for a fixed price voucher, which I think that's gonna be fairly straightforward. So what I'm gonna do is just add that behind the scenes and talk you through it, because we're just simply checking a code and returning a fixed uh, price amount. In the date range multiplier test, we're just gonna change this back so we're not getting a failing test there. And then I'll talk you through what I've done with the fixed price voucher test. So as you can see, very similar to the one we did for the date range multiplier. So fixed price voucher returns a correctly modified price. Uh, I've created a fixed price voucher and then we have the promotion. So this time the difference is that the uh, type is fixed price voucher. The criteria is an array of code with a value of OU812. And the adjustment is going to be a fixed adjustment. So if the uh, voucher applies, um, then you just set a fixed price of 100. So I've got a name which isn't that important. Uh, and then same again here, lowest price inquiry, and I've set a voucher code this time, whereas the distinguishing part on the date range multiplier was the actual uh, request date. And so here um, for modify, uh, because if I set it to 100, then it wouldn't actually make any difference because 100 times five would be 500 anyway. So what I've done is set this to 150, 150 times five, will be 750, but we're setting it to uh, 100 if the voucher applies, five times 100 is 500. Let's go and look at the fixed price voucher. So a bit smaller than the last one because it's very simple here. It's just checking, um, checking the negation. So if the voucher code does not match the promotion uh, code, then simply return price times quantity. However, if it does match, then you're returning the adjustment, which is the uh, fixed price in this case, multiplied by the quantity. So in other words, you will be returning 100 multiplied by five in our scenario. So let's go and run this test. And so as you can see, we now get two tests and two assertions. We'll take a pause there because I think the even items multiplier might be a little bit more involved and I don't want these videos to get too long. If you're enjoying this workflow and you like this test-driven approach and you'd like to know more about testing PHP, then don't forget you can still check out my testing PHP uh, course. I'll leave a link in the description and also at the end of the video.
If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.